In this video, we'll build a clean assignment or task tracker in Excel with drop downs for subject and type, automatic days available, color coded status, and highlighted overdue tasks. You'll be able to filter by subject to see what's due next, focus on specific work types and status, plus, there's an automatic schedule for a quick calendar style overview, all without any macros. You can grab the completed file from the link in the video description. But first, I'll explain how to build it yourself so you can customize it to your needs. First, we need to set up the lists for our drop downs. So we need a list of subjects and in the interest of time, I'm just going to paste them in and we need a list for the type that is assignment, coursework and exams. Now I want to format these as Excel tables. So on the home tab, format as table and I'll just go with this light style here. My table has headers, click OK. And we'll call this table subject and let's repeat for the types format as table light. My table has headers and we'll call this one type. Now I need to define names for the tables for use in the drop down lists. We do that by the formulas tab and notice I've just selected the subjects, not the heading. I'm going to define a name. We'll call this one subject list and you can see it's referring to the subject table subjects column. Click OK and let's repeat for the types. I'll call this work type. And again, you can see it's referring to the type table type column. This is just going to ensure that the drop down lists that I'm going to set up shortly automatically include any new items that you add to these tables. So now we're ready to create our tracker and I've got a spreadsheet here just with some formatting to save me some time. I need columns for my data. And remember, this can be used to track anything. So customize the columns as required. I want task, subject, type, due, time required, status, days available, notes and links. And I'm just going to select the headings and on the home tab, I'm going to format this as a table as well. And this time I'm going to go with this ice blue color. My table has headers, click OK, and we'll call this table tasks. Now I'm going to add some data validation for the subjects and type to keep entries consistent. So on the data tab, we're going to go data validation, here I want a list and the source is going to be the name that we defined earlier. Now, if you can't remember it, press the F3 key, brings up the list of names, select the one you want, click OK and OK. And now we can choose from the list. Let's repeat for the type, date validation, list, F3 to bring up the list, double click the one you want, we'll also insert it, click OK and that's done. Now I also want a date validation list for my status and because these aren't going to change, I can just define the list inside the data validation dialog box. The items I want here are not started, started and completed. And you just separate them with a comma. Click OK and that's ready to go as well. I'm just going to pause while I enter some data before we add the finishing touches. OK, so there's my list of tasks. Now I just need a formula to calculate the days available. It's simply taking the due date minus today's date. I can use the today function to automatically populate today's date. So it's always up to date. Press enter and because it's in a table, it fills down. Now it's picked up the date format. I don't want that. Let's just format it as general. And you can see we've got a task here that's overdue. So let's use some conditional formatting to highlight those overdue tasks. So with the column selected, conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, less than, and here we want any cells less than zero will highlight in a light red fill with dark red text. You can see it there. Perfect. Next, let's color code the status to help us identify tasks we have and haven't started. So again, conditional formatting, highlight cells rules. And here we want text that contains. So where it's not started, instead of the same light red fill, I'm going to go down and choose a customized format. And here I've got various formatting options. So for the fill, I'm going to go with this dark blue and let's give it a white border on the outline and we'll also apply a white font. Click OK and there we get the preview there. Perfect. Let's repeat for the started, except this time I want to go into new rule and here I'm going to only format cells that contain specific text that begins with started. That way I won't also format the not started. Let's go in and choose a different color. So we'll continue with the white font and the white border. And for the fill color, 
we'll go with this purple color. Click OK and OK. Now for completed, I want to format the whole row. So I'm going to select the whole table and then conditional formatting, new rule. And here I need to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And it's going to be where this cell here, except I don't want to always reference just row eight, I want row eight to be relative. So we're going to delete the dollar sign from row eight, but keep it locked on column H. So where column H equals completed. We're going to format this in a gray font. We'll choose this shade of gray and we want to strike through. So there's a preview there of how it's going to look. Click OK and OK. Now you can see our completed rows are grayed out. Perfect. And as we choose a different item here, let me test completed. You can see that this cell hasn't been grayed out completely. The red formatting is still there. And that's because if we go into conditional formatting, manage rules, you can see this format is after this one. So this is applied, then this, then this, then this. What we want to do is check the box here, stop any of these other formats if this one is true. I'll click apply and you can see now the red fill color is gone. Perfect. So now we can change the task status and you can see it automatically updates. But let's take this one step further and make it easy to focus on specific subjects, work types and status. So with any cell in the table selected, I'm going to go to the table design tab and insert slicer. And I want slices for the subject, the type and the status. Click OK. These slices are just going to allow me to filter the table intuitively. While I've got them all selected, I'm going to apply this slicer style with no border that I set up earlier. And then we'll move these two over here and we'll deal with them in a moment. First, let's reformat this slicer so it fits in this space. So I want to give it seven columns and we're going to make it 2.8 high and 28.4 wide. And let's make the buttons a bit bigger to take up the space. All right, I'll roughly move it into place there. And next, these two can be formatted together because they're going to be the same size. So again, 2.8 high and 3.5 wide, and we want to reduce the button height to 0.5 so they fit in these spaces I've allowed for them up here. And now your table reads like an interactive dashboard, allowing you to focus on what you need and quickly spot trouble. This tracker uses several different Excel features working together. And once you've built up a broad set of skills, projects like this start to feel effortless. And that's exactly what my Excel Expert course gives you. A complete toolkit of professional level features and techniques you can mix and match to solve real world problems, plus support and mentoring from me personally. You'll find the link in the description and pinned comment. Finally, we're going to build a lightweight schedule to see everything at a glance. So on this sheet, I'm going to add my headers, task, subject, type, due and time required. And I'm going to use a formula to extract the tasks from the tracker that are not completed. And we want it sorted, so we'll start with the sort function. And then I'll use filter to extract the tasks from the tracker. And here I want the task through to the time required where the status is not equal to completed. Close parentheses on filter, and then I want to sort it based on the due date. So that's the one, two, three, fourth column. And then I can choose to sort it ascending or descending. Well, it's automatically going to sort it in ascending order. So let's omit that last argument, close parentheses. And there's my spilled array of my tasks that are not completed. Next, I need to create a horizontal date row from the earliest to the latest due date. And I can use the sequence function to automatically generate this list from the dates in the tasks table. So sequence, now I want it going across the columns. So we're going to skip the rows argument. The number of columns will be determined by the number of dates in my date range. So we'll use max to find, and we'll refer to the tracker, to find the maximum date in my tasks due date column, close parentheses on max, minus the minimum of the due dates, plus one. And then the next argument for sequence is the start date. Well, that's going to be my minimum of my tasks due date. So we're just going to copy that and paste it in there. And then the step argument default is one. So we don't need that. Let's close parentheses, press enter, and it spills the dates, but they don't look like dates yet. So let me select them all. I'm just going to go out to column 80 to allow for more dates to be added. 
and then control one to open the format cells dialog box and under number I want a custom number format that just formats this as a day and then month 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 so we've got the day and the month name click OK and then let's add a formula here that picks up these dates and in order to reference this build array just follow it by a hash that way as my spilled array updates generated by sequence updates so too will this reference here and instead of the date serial number here and again going out to column AT control 1 we're going to set a custom number format here that just shows the day name abbreviated to three characters all right that looks good let's just center those and while I'm here let's put some formatting on these cells we'll format the font in this blue color and let's control one and we'll go in and apply a border in the same blue just to the top and the bottom and we'll make them all bold there we go and with that this list of tasks and the dates across the columns will automatically update as the data in my tracker changes because they're all linked now I'm just going to go in here and to help make it easy to read we're going to freeze the panes at the junction of cell G6 and that will just make it easy to scroll across and up and down through my data now it would be nice to format this as an Excel table so we've got these banded rows which makes reading across rows much easier but because we have spilled array formulas we can't use tables however I can use conditional formatting to replicate those banded rows so I'm just going to select out to column AT and down to row 30 just to allow for more tasks and more dates and then we're going to go into conditional formatting new rule and I want to use a formula now this formula has three criteria that needs to be met so I'll use the AND function the first criteria is to make sure that the row has some data in it so I don't want to lock it on row 6 but I do want to lock it on column B and I want to check that it's not equal to blank next I need to make sure that my header has some data in it referencing cell B5 here I want to lock it on row 5 but make the column update as it moves across so we're checking that row 5 is not blank and then because I want every other row formatted we can use the mod function here to take the row number which is generated by the row function and divide it by 2 if the row number is divisible by 2 it won't be formatted so we'll be formatting odd row numbers only close and and then let's go into the formatting so I want to set the fill color to this pale shade of blue click OK and OK and there I have my banded rows and as my data updates here my banded rows will automatically copy down as far as row 30 now I need to mark each tasks due date in my calendar and again we can use conditional formatting so let's select from cell AT30 all the way back to cell G6 and then conditional formatting new rule use a formula now this one has two criteria so again we need and the first criteria is to check that this cell here isn't empty but we want to only absolute the row reference so we remove the dollar sign from G and you can toggle through those references using the F4 key we're checking that it's not empty and then we want to check that the date here and again F4 to remove the dollar sign from the G is equal to the date here now this time I want to F4 twice because I want to lock the reference to column E but not row 6 so we're checking that those two dates match if they match and this column is not empty then we're going to format this with a fill color and let's go with this purple here click OK and OK and you can see the dates are highlighted accordingly now there's something that we need to check here in the conditional formatting manage rules dialog box and that is that this rule for purple is at the top above the rule for the banded rows if they're in the other order then the banded row will override the purple formatting so we don't want that I'll put that back and click OK and that's it a simple grid where each task lights up on its due date and it automatically updates as you make changes in your task tracker now that you've seen how combining a few tools can create something powerful take a look at this video on five hidden excel tools almost nobody's talking about they'll expand your toolkit and spark ideas for your next project i'll see you there